Unleashed in the East is among the most iconic and definitely is the most controversial live album in the history of heavy metal. Can you believe that? Released on the 17th of September in 1979, Unleashed in the East became the first live album by Judas Priest and changed the genre forever. One of the real stepping stones. Still support of our Defenders of the Faith series. Let's first of all take a look at some of the lesser known facts around it and then finally once and for all answer the question of how much of it was actually unleashed in the studio. Here you go. Unleashed in the East was recorded on two nights, February 10th and February 15th, 1979 in Tokyo and marked the second return of the band to the land of the rising sun in just a half a year and the reason for such a swift return was that to the surprise of the band themselves, the first time around, a summer before, in Japan, Judas Priest were treated like kings. Judas Priest! Thank you very much. And so this time around they returned not as a new up-and-coming foreign band, but came back with a headline tour and so their set list, although of course it remained the same at its core, has expanded from 11 to 17 songs on average, allowing Judas Priest to fully showcase how diverse was the unstoppable sound of their early days. The main difference between the concerts which will later on be turned into what we know as Unleashed in the East and their previous journey to Japan was in fact in their looks. In October Judas Priest released their second album for the year 1978, Killing Machine, which of course was known as Hellband for Leather in North America. By the way, 1978 was probably the most productive year in the entire Judas Priest career as it is the only one in which Judas Priest released two studio albums and of course it is this productivity together with the new revolutionary sound which ensured Priest would embark on a massive world tour the year after. But anyways, together with the new sound, Killing Machine has also given Judas Priest and eventually the entire heavy metal what it did not have before, its own visual aesthetics. And it was in Japan where Judas Priest first presented it in full at their show. Leather starts in a roaring motorcycle on stage is what we all of course know Judas Priest for today, yet in 1979 that simply blew the minds of many and not only in Japan but all over the world as at that point no one knew that heavy metal can not only sound but also look like that. And this look was of course something that the Judas Priest management was very happy to capitalize on on their future live album debut and they were absolutely right to do so. Back in the late 70s, books, or rather records, were in fact vastly judged by their covers. And in case of Unleashed in the East, it actually worked out quite well for Judas Priest. We made a killer metal album. Unleashed in the East's cover artwork was able to capture everything the band was about by the late 70s, early 80s. Their scandalous look, electrifying show, and even the passion of those five boys on stage, or four if we're being honest. Remember how a couple of years ago Judas Priest announced that they will go on a four piece by which freaked everyone out? It's just outrageous. Well, technically the legendary picture for the cover art of Unleashed in the East has caught the band when they were actually a four piece for the very first time since Glenn Tipton joined the band in May of 1974. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'm Les Binks. The drummer Les Binks, who has recorded both Stained Class and Killing Machine with Judas Priest and was in fact the drummer on both shows which led up to Unleashed in the East, has left the band by the time of the live album release, continuing the band's long-run drama of their search for a permanent drummer. Good drama. Great look. Good drama. Good, yeah. Good yeah. drama. In fact, according to Lass, he decided to leave Judas Priest precisely because of Unleashed in the East, and more specifically because according to him he hasn't been fairly rewarded for the recording of that live album as he was essentially hired as a freelance session drummer by the band and was never made an official member.
Well, either way, by the time of the photo shoot for the album's cover, the band's next member, Dave Holland, has not actually been recruited yet. And so when the longtime priest photographer Finn Costello was given the task of shooting the promo photos for the cover, he made sure the shots were staged such that Rob is always in front of the stage, so that you catch with your eyes that there is a drum kit behind him, yet the empty seat cannot be seen. Well, either way, this artwork, which for the record I and many Judas Priest fans around the globe actually consider to be one of the best album artworks Judas Priest had in their entire discography. Yes, that's true. Helped many fans around the globe to discover not only Judas Priest, but heavy metal overall. For by then, when there was no internet and information spread around the world at a slightly slower pace, seeing a heavy metal band in leather and studs from an album artwork which just screamed raw power and energy was unimaginable for many and did in fact serve as a rather legit reason to purchase the record. <laughs> In fact, many fans to this very day see a message hidden on it, as if you take a closer look at the position of Rob, KK and Glenn, it does in fact remind a figure which by then has only made one appearance on a Judas Priest artwork, yet soon would become an unofficial symbol of one of the greatest heavy metal bands on the planet. Yet, if you think that Finn was able to catch that great shot during one of the shows in Tokyo, you're actually wrong, as it was actually taken in the studio long after the concerts happened. Just like something else on this record. Pretty much everyone knows that Unleashed in the East was deemed by many as Unleashed in the studio for the alleged use of overdubs in its production. But let's look deeper into it. Judas Priest kicked off their 1979 tour with a five-concert lag in Japan, so the two shows which they recorded Unleashed in the East at were among the very first ones of a large world tour. In fact, the boys found out that the label wants them to record those shows only upon arriving in Japan, catching them a bit off guard, which Judas Priest members were not too thrilled about. Why, why, why? Yet, while for most of the boys this was just a matter of a concentration, this was especially critical for Rob Halford, who always suffered from insomnia when traveling to the East, which vastly affected his not warmed up properly at the start of the tour voice. You have got one of the most acrobatic voices in the history of mankind and I've never heard it fail all the gigs we've done together. What do you do to grease it? As a consequence, the first shows in Japan, Rob Halford's voice was not even close to what we all know the future metal god should sound like. And when Judas Priest finally got into the studio to work on Unleashed in the East, Rob was simply shocked that the poor Japanese fans had to endure him sounding the worst, well, possibly ever. Why, God, why? So, together with their new producer Tom Allen, who, as we all know, will become their longtime friend and will work with the band for many years to come, they decided to re-record the vocals, as they simply could not present Judas Priest sounding, well, completely opposite from what Judas Priest actually sounded like on most live shows back then. <laughs> the time has come to set the record straight. So first of all, yes, Rob Halford re-recorded the vocals for the entire show, not just a couple of parts here and there. But he didn't actually do it in the studio as we know it, but instead just grabbed the microphone and sent through the entire concert in one take, without any breaks or re-recordings. None. In a way, he kind of gave just one more concert for the team to work with. And secondly, well, I'm not actually 100% sure that everything we hear on Unleashed in the East has been taken from that third concert. Bro, what are you talking about, man? You see, I, just like I'm sure many other Judas Priest fans, actually happen to own the bootleg recordings straight from the audience from both of those nights. And by the way, I'll be more than happy to post the links to those on my Patreon page, so check it out afterwards. But there are actually a couple of very interesting points which can be taken from those. Number one is just how stunning the difference between Rob's voice on February 10th, right at the beginning of the tour, when by the way Judas Priest were playing 
two shows in one day. This from the way he sounded on February 15th. <laughs> His voice on that second show at Nakano Sun Plaza Hall in Tokyo was already in almost his regular shape, which leads us to point number two. While by comparing the two bootlegs to Unleashed in the East, it becomes quite obvious that vocals were redone later on, there are quite a lot of moments from the show on February 15th which are almost identical to what we hear on the live album version, to the point that it might be virtually impossible to repeat those so close to the original later in the studio. Which makes me think that for the vocals, Tom Allen actually did use the mix of both February 15th show and the third show Rob did in the studio several months later. And this is how he was able to make this record as authentic as possible, while obviously being given a virtually impossible task. Oh, and yes, I guess there is one more point we should add. No matter what all of those conspiracy theories say, all of the guitars, drums and bass parts are 100% authentic which just once again shows how incredible Judas Priest wore life back then. Originally, Unleashed in the East was supposed to be a mere token, only for the fans in Japan, called Priest in the East. Yet, when Judas Priest heard the final product, they were simply blown away by how Tom and the team were able to capture the entire essence of Judas Priest's live performance of that time, and decided to release it worldwide. And this was possibly one of the best decisions Judas Priest ever did. Unleashed in the East brought Priest enormous popularity around the world, becoming the first platinum record in the band's discography, and inspired hundreds of new heavy metal bands in England and beyond. And the truth is that the only real criticism fans had was not the whole re-recorded vocals part, but the fact that it originally featured only 9 out of the 17 songs of that tour's amazing set list. Yet this was actually a very smart and deliberate choice, for it actually allowed Unleashed in the East to serve the most important purpose of all, making fans excited and eager to see Judas Priest live skyrocketing their ticket sales all across the globe. And who knows, maybe if it was not for Unleashed in the East, heavy metal would have never become what it is today. But anyways, what do you guys personally think about Unleashed in the East and the whole point that parts of it have been re-recorded in the studio, which the band was actually very open about. Please let us know in the comments. But also very very important and very very quick i just wanted to point out that only around 30 percent of the people who are watching my videos are actually subscribed to the metal pilgrim channel so if you still haven't done so yet and especially if this is not the first video you're watching on the channel please consider doing that right now it would really mean a lot to me thank you so much for watching this video but most importantly thank you so much for supporting me this show and ukraine through this very very difficult time just know that your support means the world to me and all ukrainian metalheads will prevail. Slava Ukraine!